25 years ago, I invented this leg system. And a, uh, well, something special about this is that it moves more or less like real animals do. And we seem to be very sensitive for animal movement since uh, animals' movement in the past, in our evolution, it could mean either something to eat or other to, something to run away from. So that's why our eye is very sensitive for animal movement. And when we see a strand beast, uh, you see something which touches the, the, the animal movement in our brain, but we see something mechanical. And that contrast, that um, dislocation, you could say, turns out for a switch and in the mind, and then you see that the animal is quite innocent, and then people start smiling. So I think this is my theory, how it works on people's minds. I think there's a big difference between showing my work in a science environment or an art environment. Science environment is more like lots of laser light, lots of loud music, and I don't like that too much. I like science, but I don't like the environment of, well, sort of spectacular uh, shows. So I prefer the simple ways of showing it as an art object, it's more uh, intimate and people come closer and use their imagination more. And this circular movement is transformed to a walking movement written by the pencil. So you see, as soon as the leg is on the ground, the pencil is on the ground, so it's a straight line when the pencil is on the ground. Now that means that the animal stays on the same level. It's very much depending on the proportion of the, the, the length of the tubes between the backbone and the pencil. Now, when I started this, I didn't know which proportion of lengths I needed to get this curve. Then the computer can generate this curve as a given proportion of length. So for a month, day and night, the computer was reproducing selection and at the end they came 30 numbers out of the computer. Because that's, you could see, as the DNA code. That's why they walk uh, the way they walk. I don't try to make beautiful animals. People praise me for the beauty of the animals, but I, it's not my purpose to do that. In the end, when it's finished, I'm surprised myself how beautiful they became. But. Uh, it's not decoration, I think. Everything in, in the beast, it has a function. We seem to be sensitive for the, the way they move, but also the way they, they are. So the, the color, somehow, it, it gives a, a sensual feeling. Uh, usually in, in, in spring, I bring a new animal to the beach and I work the whole summer on it and to do all kinds of experiments with that beast. And then comes the fall and I declare the animal extinct. So it becomes a fossil, it goes to the boneyard and nowadays these animals from the boneyard, they are adopted by museums, so they have uh, uh, exhibitions and there they uh, reanimate those fossils by pumping in the mid stomach up with a compressor and then the animal can walk still on the stored wind 
but that is generated by an electric uh, gadget. So uh, just for the show for people. When the animal breaks a leg, people feel sorry for the beast, and I don't really feel sorry for the beast. I'm just mad at the beast. I don't want to be a beast doctor. I want to create a beast. I want to, in fact, I want to be a new god to, uh, to create animals. Don't like repairs, no. I want these animals to survive here on the beach and uh, somehow they become more complex, but after a while it becomes more simple. And so it's a sort of wave between complexity and, uh, and simpleness. So you shouldn't make it too complex, otherwise it doesn't work anymore. So you have to make it more simple again. But if, if it's too simple, then the animals don't survive. So every time you need to make new methods and new instruments to make these animals survive on the beach. What I try to do, in fact, I restrict myself very much in the choice of my materials. I just use this kind of tube uh, to build the beast. And you could say the real creator he restricted himself also very much in the choice of material. He just used protein to make us. You can with protein you can make skin, you can make eyes. And you wouldn't say that if you put an egg in the pan to fry an egg, you see that clumsy material, that that is the ultimate construction material for life. But somehow if you have time millions of millions of years and you try again and again, the result is not, is not bad, I mean, the way we are. And so in the same way, I also want to use just this kind of tube. So this tube you can see as my protein, as my basic material, to bring a new specimen to Earth. So before I leave this planet, I hope to uh, surprise humanity with a new specimen living on this beach here.